Hello listeners, I'm Navanita Subba and I'm an assistant professor of the Department of Mass Communication in Selishun College, Siliguri campus. In today's session, I will be discussing the normative theory. This will be useful for the fourth semester students as it is part of their curriculum. Before discussing the normative theory, let us first understand what is media theory. Media theory refers to the complex social, political and philosophical principles that helps us understand the relation between media and the society. Normative theory is different from other media theories as it deals with what media ought to do or how it should behave in a given political economic system. The theory was proposed by S. Siebert, Theodore Peterson and Wilbur Schramm in 1956 during the wake of World War II and the Cold War. Here one must remember that the world then was divided on ideology and there was a power tussle between the developed countries which was mostly capitalist and the Soviet Union. Siebert and his colleagues in their book The Four Theories of Press classify the role of media in the world and in doing so they emphasize on Europe, United States and the Soviet Union. First amongst the four theories is the authoritarian theory. As the name suggests, this theory describes the state to be a powerful force which controls all forms of communication. They believe that the government control of the press is necessary because the government and the elite were in a better position to guide the public who according to them were less intellectual. So in this uh, model, the government uses the press to disseminate or spread their ideas and objectives to the general public. The media is not allowed to do anything which would undermine the established authority. Any form of criticism of the existing political value is not tolerated, so the press is not free. The press then becomes just a means to an end rather than being an instrument of criticism. Under the authoritarian regime, the state uses various media means to control the freedom of the press like licensing and censorship. The government then favors certain media organizations by giving them exclusive printing rights and punishes those who criticize them. In such a situation, the journalist enjoys no freedom. Even the foreign media is seen to be subordinate to the established authority, where every content is scrutinized and censored before publishing. Therefore, in this authoritarian setup, the press acts as a mere puppet in the hands of the government. Next is the libertarian theory. This theory was developed during the 16th century when the libertarian thoughts was gaining momentum in Europe. Libertarian theory is just opposite of authoritarian theory as they believe that an individual should be free to publish whatever he or she wants. The theory was influenced by writings of thinkers like John Milton, Locke and Mill and the general philosophy of rationalism and natural rights. Libertarians are of the view that the human beings are capable to use the rationale to distinguish between good and bad. Hence, the public should be provided with all sides of the story so that they can come to their own conclusion. Unlike authoritarians, libertarians proposed that the government exists to serve the people and the same goes for media. So in this model, press freedom is given the utmost important, importance, which means that the press is free to critique the government without fearing any backlash. In fact, criticism is encouraged by the government and any form of restriction of the press is seen as an infringement of citizens' rights. In this system, there is no restriction on publication and information gathering. There is a free flow of information across state borders. 
which basically means that there is no censorship. So one can say that this is an ideal place where a journalist can flourish as he or she enjoys maximum freedom. But the theory has been critiqued on certain grounds, mainly that it serves to protect the interest of the media owners who might use, misuse the freedom of the press to their advantage. Critics also point out that the theory ignores reasonable restriction like self-restriction. Third theory uh, in this four theories is the uh, social responsibility theory. The theory lies between authoritarianism and libertarian theory as it emphasizes the obligation of media towards the society alongside press freedom. The theory was developed in America in 1947. That time there was a growing concern that the rampant privatization of the press was causing problem in the society. For this, the Commission of Press Freedom was established. The theory emphasizes that the media has certain obligation towards the society, mainly informativeness, truth, accuracy, objectivity and balance. So the press was free but it also had to abide and uh, fulfill its obligation towards the society. Siebert and his colleagues are of the view that the media system should be pluralized, that it should reflect the society as it is, like a mirror. It also says that this is achieved when the media is allowed to put forth the various viewpoints. Because see, if one, uh, one journalist might interpret an information in a certain way and the, an, another journalist might interpret in a different way. So both are allowed to publish their content. The theory moves beyond simple objective reporting of facts towards interpretative reporting. The theory talks about total media freedom on one hand and accepts selective external control on the other. Selective external control like uh, self-regulation by laying down codes of conduct and being accountable to the public. The theory helped to create professionalism in media by setting high standards of truth, accuracy and fairness. The social responsibility theory basically assumes that the media will, um, will be the torchbearer of democracy by being responsible in critiquing the government and also serving the public at the same time. Last of the four theories is the Soviet media theory, also known as the communist media theory. It is called communist because as we all know that the Soviet political system was based on the communist theory of Marx and Engels. The theory traces its route back to the Russian revolution of 1917. Since the theory is based on communist ideology, it does not believe in giving or having private ownership of media. The main objective of mass media hence is to serve the interests of the working class because in a uh, socialist society, the working class holds power. This also meant that the society holds power to punish any anti-social publications. In this model, the government uses the media as an instrument to protect and propagate their communist philosophy. The media under the Soviet model was to create a strong socialized society by providing positive thoughts, motivating and mobilizing the people, informing and educating them and also entertaining them at the same time. Uh, so you might think that the Soviet media theory is quite similar to the authoritarian theory. But that is not the case because there are few differences. Like in the Soviet media model, the press is expected to be self-regulated in terms of content. That is, it will align by the social political system of the state and it will also be responsible to the public and work for the betterment of the public, which was not the case in authoritarian system. Uh, so when we talk about the four theories, what we see is that the ideology of the state defines the media model. So if the ideology of the state is authoritarian, you will have an authoritarian model. If it is libertarian, you will have a libertarian model, so on and so forth. Later on, many theorists 
looked beyond this four theories because they felt that the four theories were inadequate in the modern world that it did not define the role of media in the modern world i think even you must have noticed that the four theories when we talk about the four theories it does not talk about or it does not take into consideration the third world countries it only talks about the first and the second world country many theorists like uh, dennis mcwell felt that the four uh, press theories only talk about press they only take into consideration press and does not talk about the television and radio because see one must remember that the four theories was proposed during the time of cold war uh, so from then till now so many changes has come by in terms of uh, political changes as well as technological changes for example the disintegration of the soviet union and also the coming of techno uh, television and radio and even the internet uh, for press uh, education is important literacy is important but that is not the same in terms of television and radio so what happens then is that the mass media will reach wider audience same is noted by dennis mcwell and in his book the uh, mass communication theory and introduction He says that the four theories are inadequate and therefore he proposes two more theories that is the development media theory and the democratic participant media theory the development media theory deals with the role of media in the economic development and nation building in the developing countries it argues that the media should support the government in nation building until a nation is well established and economically viable it should do so by asserting the government uh, pol- uh, asserting or sorry assisting the government to implement their policies for example in india uh, when india was independent the indian media was committed to participate in nation building Uh, though there was no control of the government still there was an underlining understanding that the media will do its part in this model the media is expected to act as a catalyst in the developmental process by fulfilling its social and political duties hence even the press freedom though it is important it should not hinder national integration so the government is free to restrict the freedom of the press in the name of national interest especially when the press is not acting in accordance to the developmental ideology of the government the theory says that the media should rather act as a vehicle of um, social and economic modernization promoting literacy and cultural development mcwill says that the press should emphasize more on the positive stories and be careful while dealing with the negative ones which would hinder economic growth and cause instability in the nation because that is the last thing that anyone would want is instability in the budding nation so this development uh, theory mostly talks about the develop role of media in national development the last of the normative theory is the democratic participant media theory this theory emphasizes on the participation of public even at the grassroots level in the communication process it focuses on the participation of the public and not so much on the quality of the content the theory talks about having diverse viewpoints and active citizen participation therefore the consumer here becomes of the mass media here becomes an active creators and not passive consumers like for example we have citizen journalism blogs vlogs etc nowadays if you see even the mainstream media have started taking citizen journalism seriously we see a lot of footage taken by the citizens being used by the mainstream media because the journalists cannot reach uh, each and every point and uh, this happens most of the time but mainly during the um, disaster if there is any natural disaster that time you will see that a lot of footage taken by the citizens which they have uploaded in the social media is to used by the mainstream media because in citizen journalism one must remember that uh, the uh, that the citizens are filming their first hand experience of the event the democratic participant media model stands 
sorry, media theory stands against commercialization and monopoly. It also it is also resistant to the bureaucracy of public media institutions. So it favors multipl- multiplicity and deinstitutionalization by changing the role of sender and the receiver. This is what we see in citizen journalism as well. So one can say to some extent media is controlled by the public in this model. So uh, we can conclude by saying that the main idea of normative theory is that the role of media, its ideas and obligations will be in accordance to the social and political value system of the given society. With this, I have come to the end of the session. I hope you found the session informative and helpful as well. Thank you so much. This and other episodes of Radio EduPods, Radio for Learning, are available on Listen to My Radio app at 6 p.m. from Monday to Friday and at 6 a.m. from Tuesday to Saturday. All episodes are available on Salesian TV YouTube channel. Share, like and subscribe Salesian TV, the ultimate learning resource channel.